Very good afternoon. Welcome to BBC London. I'm Thomas McGill. Counting still underway in many councils outside the capital. Already there have been some setbacks for the Conservative Party from those who have declared. Well, our political editor Tim Donovan is here in Tim early days, but what's the picture so far? They've uh, lost, the Conservatives have lost a fair few seats uh, around the region and there are still uh, quite a few results uh, to come. Uh, we'll talk about Hertfordshire a little later where it's been a pretty uh, difficult time for them, but their biggest blow came uh, losing control of the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. The Liberal Democrats won there. And Miranda Shunker watched that unfold. One of the first shocks of the night was the Conservative Council leader losing his seat to 22-year-old Liberal Democrat George Blundell. I don't want to boast, obviously, but I'm really, really proud of what we've all done as a team. And I'm, I'm beyond excited to see what we can do as a council. I think a lot of this was national issues. I'm sure as further results come in across England, that will be reflected, particularly in the south of England. But look, absolutely, of course, as leader of the council, some responsibility has to stop with me. Before long, Ed Davey, the Liberal Democrat leader, turned up to celebrate the success. I'm so proud of the result here in Windsor. And I'm so proud that when Katy Perry and Lionel Richie enter Windsor Castle for the coronation concert on Sunday, they'll be going into a ward that's represented by three brand new Liberal Democrat councillors. So a surprise set of results for the Liberal Democrats who will no doubt be looking to capitalise on them now, calling for a general election and calling time on Rishi Sunak's government. And Tim, probably worth saying it hasn't been entirely bad across the board for the Tories, has it? Well, they held up OK in Essex. You know, they hung on to Basildon, they hung on to Harlow, but they did lose control of Brentwood. The Liberal Democrats gained some seats there. Um, they hung on to Thurrock, but, and that's despite all the financial, major financial problems they've been having in, in that borough, but they did lose uh, their leader and it may not look good for next year. And Simon Dedman was watching that. You could see it on the MP and council leader's face before the votes were counted. The Conservatives were glum. Then the results started coming in. Then the council leader lost his seat. This the reaction from Labour. This the reaction of Thurrock's Conservative MP. We, we need to take lessons from the the messages we've been given by the electorate today and they clearly don't want the Conservatives in the council. I think we need to take that on the chin and recognise that we don't have a mandate to run Thurrock anymore. The party has gained five seats here in Thurrock. That's the best set of results we've had for many, many years in Thurrock. And equally as importantly, the people of Thurrock have given their verdict on the, the Conservatives' catastrophic mismanagement of the council finances. Well, the Conservatives have had a drubbing tonight, but they've managed to just hang on to Thurrock Council. Unlike Brentwood, where the Conservatives lost their majority, and now the Lib Dems will try to form a coalition. Obviously, we're going to have to talk with um, other parties within the council to see whether administration can be formed. And I'm sure that will be taking place tomorrow. But uh, as it stands at the moment, we're obviously in level pegging with the Tories. Um, we're not the minority anymore. And um, I'm hoping we can make some real changes. Labour has made inroads in Essex, but Harlow and Basildon still look solid for the Tories. The Conservatives still run Thurrock, but there are fewer of them. Simon Dedman, BBC London. And Tim, finally, Hertfordshire, how did it happen? There? Well, it's only the um, second time in 50 years that they've lost control of East Hertfordshire, and the Greens have surged there. The Tories have also lost control of Hartsmere, just north of London, and uh, Wellin, Wellin Hatfield, and uh, Guy Lynn's there. Well, we've had the result announced in the last half an hour. It's been referred to as a dramatic result locally here in Leafy, Wellin and Hatfield. And the Conservatives were running the council effectively for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, yesterday they had 26 seats. That has now gone down to 22 seats. The gains have been uh, for the Lib Dem and Labour. They both gained two seats. So that now means that this council moves to no overall control. Discussions, I've been told, are taking place about what the administration will be moving forward. It looks likely that it will be a Lib Dem, Labour-led administration. It is, of course, significant, too, that this area is the terrain uh, in terms of the local MP of Grant Shapps. 
He is the Secretary of State of Energy, Security and Net Zero. And certainly the Lib Dems and Labour are now saying that this area, in terms of the general election, is looking more and more marginal. Well, you can get the latest results as they come in throughout the day on the BBC Election Live page. That address is on your screen now. In other news, a man's been charged with murder after a 31-year-old woman was stabbed to death in Brixton. Johanna Dogby was killed in Stockwell Park Walk on Monday afternoon. Mohammed Nur is also accused of GBH after three other people suffered stab wounds, slash wounds, sorry, in Brixton within an hour of each other on Saturday. The 33-year-old man is due in court later. Now, at London Ambulance Service says it expects a 30% increase in calls over the coronation weekend. It's drafting in 250 extra staff to cope with the demand and to cope with the expected crowds. When you've got lots of people together, it, it can be difficult to get a big, big ambulance through. So we've got uh, a number of our paramedics and clinicians out on foot. So they'll be out. You'll be seeing them with green rucksacks full of medical equipment should they need it. We've got people out on bikes. We've got people out on motorcycles. So uh, on foot, on bike, on motorcycles. And we will have cars and ambulances as usual as well. Now, with only uh, one day to go until the coronation, school children in Harrow have been celebrating by dressing up as kings and queens for a parade that will be judged by the mayor of Harrow, Nora Fackham, went along. We're here in the centre of Harrow where several schools are taking part in the King's Coronation Parade and I'm joined by pupils from Norbury Primary School. Hi there. Hi. So why is the parade important to you? This parade is important to me because we're celebrating the um, coronation of the new monarch, King Charles III. So for tomorrow I'll be hosting a big party in my house of family members and friends to celebrate the new coronation of a new king. And who designed your lovely crown now? I love it. Um, I did, and the way I did it, I took my favourite colours, um, which is dark pink and purple, and I made a nice pattern, and I also put some other swirls and make it look lovely, lovely queen. And what's your message to King Charles? Uh, my message to King Charles, that he lives a long life and has a happy life. Lovely. Passengers on London's Underground will be able to hear a specially recorded message from the Keen and Queen from today. The announcement, which includes a reminder to please mind the gap, will be played on the Tube over the course of the weekend. OK, well, let's take a look at that all-important weekend weather with Elizabeth. Hello there, good afternoon. Well, there's some wet weather around for most of us today and the general outlook over the Coronation Bank holiday weekend is that it will be unsettled. So yes, wet at times, but it won't be raining all the time. There'll also be some sunshine and it's certainly looking drier on Sunday. For the rest of this afternoon though, we're talking about sunny spells and some showers. Some of those showers could be heavy and even thundery in places, but it will still feel warm. And in the best of the sunshine, we'll see temperatures peak at around 18 degrees Celsius. Now, as we head through this evening and overnight, we'll lose the daytime heating, of course, so the showers will fizzle away. There will be some clear spells and it will be a slightly chillier start to the day tomorrow. Temperatures generally between 6 and 9 degrees Celsius. Now, tomorrow, possibly a dry, very early start, but it won't be too long before we see this rain feed in from the southwest, possibly some heavier downpours at times through the late morning, first part of the afternoon. That weather front is going to clear. It will leave behind it a legacy of low cloud and also possibly possibly one or two light showers. It will, of course, feel a little cooler. But by the time we get to Sunday, there'll be more in the way of sunshine with highs of 19, possibly 20 degrees. OK, well, that's all from me. Asad Ahmed will be with you this evening for a special programme from Buckingham Palace. Until then, have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Bye bye.